Welcome back to the Aussie Shed, ladies and gentlemen, for another episode of Project Fairlady. So recently, one of the subscribers to the channel, Eric, sent me a message regarding a conversion that he'd done on his Z32 in the US. Now, what Eric had done is adapted an R35 GDR brake booster and master cylinder to his car. And I think that was an evolution of, uh, of, of guys trying different... Uh, Booster Master Cylinder Combos on, on TT.net using 370Z uh, Brake Boosters and Masters, which uh, seems to fit, but there are issues with the uh, the mounting stud lengths, and uh, this just seems to be an easier alternative that, uh, fortunately, Eric worked out that you could do, was to use the, uh, the R35 setup, because it is a, a much simpler sort of conversion to do. Now, this interested me just because I obviously like dicking around with stuff and the fact that I am running 370Z brakes on the car and at some stage I may even upgrade to R35 GDR brakes and it makes sense to sort of future-proof the braking system now uh, rather than do it later once the engine is in, even though I've really only just finished uh, installing what I have in there now, which is a stripped and repainted brake booster with a brand new HFM parts uh, master cylinder. So that whole setup in there is, you know, it's basically all new and finished. <laughs> so yes, I'm an idiot that just can't help himself modifying stuff. So I figure, uh, worst case scenario, I can always switch back to this if I'm not happy with uh, the R35 GDR stuff. There is only minor modifications that you need to do to fit the R35 booster. You have to slightly enlarge the, the center hole in the firewall on the outside. The hole on the inside is still okay, which means that you can uh, actually reuse the original setup back in there with no issues whatsoever. So it's a completely reversible modification, in other words. What I'm about to do is uh, basically move all the stuff back off there, disconnect everything, and remove this lovely setup that I've uh, that I've got in there now, and uh, I do have a R35 GDR brake booster sitting here on the shelf, which I'm going to attempt to fit up. As I say, uh, Eric's already done this, and it works on his car from all reports. It is a left-hand drive vehicle, though, and and there is a slight variation in on how everything's laid out in that mirror reverse scenario. So uh, initially what I want to do is try and fit the booster and see if it will actually fit if there's nothing that's going to interfere on uh, right-hand drive vehicles. So I guess I better get into it. Nearly there. We just got to get the booster out now. Like pulling a splinter. Just a little bit on the painful side. And this is our booster comparison, guys. There's the original Z32 booster there. And this is our R35 GDR booster here. Obviously, you can see the difference in the mounting location for the master cylinders. Uh, there's quite a few differences between them. Your Z32's booster is sealed on the front for vacuum whereas your um your r35 booster let me just get this off and i'm pulling lots of paint off with this tape is actually open and they use an O-ring on the back of the master cylinder to seal up against the booster. Uh, yeah, so you can see internally in that area there, they're, they're sort of quite different. The important thing at this stage is what's on the back. Now, so this is the gasket that came with the R35 booster. Now, the Z33 and the R35 actually 
share this gasket so that for a start tells you that things are good so as you can see that goes straight over there it goes straight over there and if you look at this gasket here that's uh, the the firewall of the Z32 that's the exact same gasket you can see this uh, this gap that we have around here that's what we need to take off to fit the R35 booster the hole on the inside is clear it's just this section here holes are all good everything else is all good um, all right let's get back to the bench it looks like there's a little bit of a mismatch in uh, in clevis height we'll just take a measurement on that i'll just do a bit of a roughy with the vernier all right so from the mounting face to the center of the clevis yeah, what are we about 142 millimeters whereas from the same mounting face to the clevis on the r35 looks about 130 they do appear to be the same thread so the easiest thing here i would assume is uh just to swap this over yeah let's say that's 50 yeah that's about 44 so this one's definitely longer the pinholes look like they're about the same but probably the easiest thing to do is just swap the clevis from the z32 booster over onto the r35 booster which is what was in eric's layout on tt.net which is which is exactly what he did i think you could probably still get it by winding this up right to the end of the thread but uh, I don't know how this all fits with the pedal I assume it's probably pretty good it's probably pretty much the same so 11 yeah 9 okay so that's a little bit narrower so you may have to use a, a washer or something if you use this one but there's no reason why you wouldn't just take it off your Z32 um, all right well other measurements now on the boosters So the diameter of our Z32 booster seems to be somewhere around 245 millimeters. Alrighty. The R35. Seems to be around 240, 45 millimeters. So you can't get much closer than that. And this is our issue here, guys, which is that base of this is about 54 mil and the base of this guy is about 59 mil so not a huge amount of difference uh, maybe a little bit more maybe 60 mil I'm just measuring slightly to the side Hence the reason why you have to trim that little bit extra out of the firewall in this area. Yeah, I've just checked the, the hole in the firewall and it is only about 55 millimetres. So it's obviously been sized properly for this guy. So we just need to knock that little bit out for this. The R35 booster actually comes with this spacer here. It slips on there. So that's how it sits on the firewall, the R35. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually mount this uh, just with some studs or some bolts through onto the firewall. And I'm going to use that as a drilling template just because that will get me a nice, neat hole. I'll just run a hole saw through this with this mounted on the four holes in the firewall. And that should just give me something really nice and neat. That's the holster I'm using. It's a two and a half or 63 millimeters. See, it just goes nicely into there. And we should be good to go. I've just got to uh, tape up and kind of uh, protect a lot of the paintwork in that area. As you know, the engine bay is not long being painted. 
and I don't want to get all the hot bits of metal sticking into everything so I've just got to uh, prep that area properly before I go shoving this through. I'm also going to give this a little bit of a touch up because it does appear to be a little bit dull on the edges of these teeth so I might grab a grinder or a Dremel or something and I'll just give these all a little bit of a touch. All right I'll be back. Well, we do appear to be through, guys. Let's have a look at this hole once we get all the tape off and see if we need to clean it up a bit or anything. It's a bit hard to sort of hold it with one hand doing that, but uh, I think it's all right. We've captured just about all the crap got cut out of there. you can see there so we didn't end up with uh, with all metal swarf everywhere all right guys that's uh, completely deep bird now nice and smooth perfectly round hole I'm very happy with that now I think I'll just shuffle the booster onto there and see if there is anything that's going to be in the way of going any further with this or if we have to actually refit the original stuff All right, guys, well, that's pretty good. You can see where it sits now. My concern was the clutch master cylinder there. No issues at all with that. There's plenty of clearance. Uh, the bolts for the clutch master cylinder and everything are all clear. And all of the hoses and stuff over here for all the vacuum tanks, uh, being that this is an original twin turbo, there's a lot of crap over in that corner there, which all seems to be pretty bloody clear. So, um... That's looking pretty pretty good, I think. Um, so at least that now puts me in a position where um, I'm happy to pull it back out and change over the clevis on the end of it to uh, suit the brake pedal. Uh, the only other thing that I'm going to work out is a way to sort of modify this bracket here. You're probably aware of this. It sits on the uh, the front of the uh, the booster on top of the brake master cylinder when it goes on. And this holds, there's a bit of a clip here that holds uh, one of the uh, vacuum tank pipes and also holds some of the pipes that go across for your PCV and your brake booster and all that sort of stuff. All right, well, that's, that's pretty positive so far. Everything seems to be clearing. Um, as I say, I can't imagine there's any issues with the brake master cylinder clearing. I don't currently have a brake master cylinder. Uh, I held off ordering anything until I was certain that the booster itself would fit. It does appear that that's the case. I'll probably just check a few more minor things off camera to be 100% certain. But it seems like, uh, you know, right-hand drive models, this is something that, uh, you know, is certainly viable as well. So, all right, I'll check a few more things off camera. I'll go and order a uh, brake master cylinder. There is one little caveat with a brake master cylinder. You need to use a left-hand drive R35 GDR brake master cylinder because the uh, the connections for the brake lines on the right-hand drive vehicle is on the opposite side. And that was one bit of information that I took away from Eric's write-up that he did. Uh, he did mention that he had to use a right-hand drive master cylinder for the same opposite reason on his US left-hand drive vehicle. So anyway, leave me with all this stuff. I'll get stuff ordered. I'll get this thing done here. And uh, I'll be back. 
Right guys, a few weeks have gone by now since I uh, set all this up. I've now fitted the Z32 Clevis onto the back of the R35. You need to wind it all the way up to the top. And that will give you the exact same measurement, which I'm unsure what it was now. <laughs> but if you measure yours, you'll work it out. But uh, yeah, it ends up completely flush with the uh, with the thread on here, uh, which is okay because the um, the actual threaded section is below that sort of top in the clevis there. So it's not like you're um, you're running right to the actual top of the thread. The thread sort of finishes down here because uh, it's always good to have a thread or two sticking up above your above your nuts or whatever you've got there. But uh, yeah, so that's the situation. Dead flush with the top. Gives you the exact same measurement as it was on the Z32. So it will line up absolutely perfectly with your pedal. Now, over that time, what's also happened is my brand spanking new R35 GDR left-hand drive master cylinder has come in from Nissan. And we'll get that guy out right now. And have a bit of a look at it. A fresh unboxing here on the Aussie Shed. How good's that? How do I open this thing? Oh, there we go. So that's the baby. As I say, this is why you need the left-hand drive version because it has the uh, the brake hose connection points on this side, which will uh, mimic the setup on the Z32. So yeah, brand spanker. The electrical connection for your brake fluid uh, level warning light is different. That's one thing I haven't sorted out for this. I'm finding it very hard to get hold of a, uh, a connector that matches this apparently uh, 370Z is exactly the same connector and there are no aftermarket suppliers for it so at this stage you're kind of stuck um, you know chopping one off a 370Z harness or something anyway I'll sort that out so you know the kit comes with an o-ring as well to fit on the back there and yeah, this looks even got some lube in there so obviously, that's how she's going to sit, just like that. And I've, I've got a little bit of bad news. There's no way I can adapt this to fit just because the brake fluid reservoir sits right up against the booster. And on the Z32's original setup, the fluid reservoir sits forward, which gives you the clearance for this. So there's actually... You know, no way you can fit this because they're both taking up the same real estate. You would ha basically have to chop this away to nothing and, yeah, there'd be nothing left of it. So that's a bit of a bummer, but, you know, just the way it is. But, uh, yeah, so this is basically ready to go on. So what I'll do, guys, I'll go and throw the brake booster back on how it was before. At least now with the proper clevis and everything on it, it can stay there. And uh, I'll turn the camera back on when I'm ready to throw the master cylinder on it. Alrighty, we are back in business. The booster is fully mounted. Uh, it's connected to the brake pedal. The clevis pin is in and everything. It all just lines up perfectly, just like the original booster did. There is enough thread engagement on the studs where they go through. There's probably three or four rows of thread left once the nuts are all the way in uh, not quite as much as the originals but you know once you've got enough you've got enough anything extra uh, you know is just a bonus ask your missus so we'll go back to the bench and I'll have a bit more of a chat about the brake booster so to get this all to work guys you need some um, brake line adapters um, now I'll leave a link to these in the description um, I bought these on eBay in the US you can probably buy them locally 
here in Oz, but uh, it was just convenient for me to um, to grab them from there. So they just basically convert the the uh, M10, I think it is, uh, on the uh, Z32's brake lines here to, I think they're an M12 on the R35. So it's just a matter of pulling these caps off and these guys will adapt in there very nicely, like so. Um, I'm sure the brake lines are going to need a little bit of modification as well. They'll probably need a little bit of bending and, uh, you know, all that sort of thing. So we'll just, we'll get this, uh, we'll get the booster mounted. I'll leave these off for now. I've already test fitted them onto the uh, the brake lines and they're the right adapters. Uh, I'll also leave a link to Eric's original write-up on tt.net and uh, any other relevant material will also be in the description. Again, thanks again, Eric, for this. I think this is a really, really marvellous solution for the Z32. All right, let's go and... Uh, oh, actually, before we do anything, we really need to fit this A-ring onto there. So our, uh, our kit here, we have instructions on where to apply the grease. Obviously, it wants a little bit of grease on the, the piston rod. And uh, where are we? In the bore on the booster. Nothing about on the A-ring. I guess uh, in the bore of the booster will, will sort of do the job. All right, I'll leave this up and we'll throw it on, eh? I can't help myself, guys. I've got to put a little bit on the A-ring. Even if I'm going against Mr. Nissen... It'll just help me get it on. It'll just help me get it on. All right. Perfecto. Perfecto. Now it mentions to grease this guy up. Why, I have no idea, but it knows what to do. I guess it probably slides in and out of there. Maybe. Yeah, it looks like that's actually the cylinder, guys. It doesn't look like it moves internally. It looks like this big section here is what slides in and out. And I guess that's why they're wanting you to um, to lube this up. So, get a bit of a bit of a bit of gear on there, a bit of silicon grease. We'll see how we go anyway, guys. This may have to come off to um, bench bleed it. I'll, I'll obviously when the uh, when the braking system comes online and we start having to bleed all this sort of stuff, uh, I'll see. I might be able to get it done. Um, you know, on the uh, on the car, but often you need to um, bench bleed them. I'll just go and put a bit of this inside the booster. And then we'll take it over and fit it up. Alrighty. Hopefully, there shouldn't be any surprises here. Um, as long as it fits on, I'm a bit worried about it fitting around the shock tower here and everything, but uh, I guess we're gonna see. Oh no, tons of room. Tons of room, Trevor. Worried about nothing. That's it. It's in. It's seated. That's in. Okay. So as I say, these are our adapters. Now you can plainly see why we have to use the left-hand drive version of, of uh, the R35 uh, master cylinder here because otherwise the connectors would be on this side. Put some right in this area here, be, you'd be able to do it, but you'd have to make up new brake lines and all that sort of stuff. Whereas these, right, adapt that into that and we're good to go. 
unfortunately we need to do a little bit of bending um, but again you know this, the back one's going to be the biggest problem but uh, I'll undo those down the bottom here bend them forward and uh, they should be they should be pretty good to go unfortunately I've got heat sleeving and bloody all sorts of um, crap on these which is going to make it a little bit tricky but I'm sure I'll get there I'm sure I'll get there got a bit of a burr on that I'm just going to have a look at that see if this is any better oh look at that in all the way in no worries at all like a wedding night dream um, just goes to show guys, um, you know, don't trust anything, even something that's brand new like that, that it doesn't have a burr or a bit of a damaged thread on it. You put it in, you risk stripping out the thread of what you're going into, being that this is aluminium and that's steel. Uh, you know, the aluminium would have given way to that, so it, it wasn't that bad. It was only a little flattened over part on one of the threads, but it still would have damaged the thread a little bit inside. It probably wouldn't have ever been anything to you know, that would have really caused any problems. But again, two seconds with a file, and uh, you know, it's it's really nice and easy. All right, now we've got to get this one in somehow. They are a bit of a worry, I'll tell you that for nothing. I might end up making up new brake lines, guys. I don't know how, how this is gonna go. It did seem like the uh, the left hand drive guys, uh, their brake lines fitted a lot better with the adapter. It didn't look like you know they were this far out that they needed this much sort of bending around. But you know it's hard to say from sort of looking at a few still pictures. But honestly, you could probably get by with that. But um, you know there's a lot of, there's a lot going on there for no reason. You know it's a pretty ugly sort of a thing when I could just bring them straight up and bend them in. And they'd be, uh, you know, they'd be really, really sweet. And I can probably even get rid of these adapters then and just make the lines up with the right fittings on them, you know. Anyway, you can see that's the bulk of it there now done. Uh, and the other thing is the electrical connector. So I say that's your, your Z32 connector there. It's the wrong size. It just doesn't fit. It's just a matter of tracking one of those down. Apparently it is quite common with uh, a lot of Nissans. But well, I definitely know that 370Z fits it. So that's about it, guys. I, th I think we'll end this video here. Any other sort of, you know, fiddling and fettling around, uh, you know, can be done sort of quite easily. Uh, you could push those brake lines around and make them fit. But like I say there, there's a lot going on there for no reason when I can just neaten them right up, make up new lines, and I can fit them better with the heat shield that I made for the Z32 uh, booster and master cylinder and they'll fit a lot better. Anyway, um, I'd like to thank Eric again for pioneering this conversion. I think it's a really good thing. It's certainly good for someone like myself who's uh, upgrading all the braking system. And uh, I think for anyone too who wants to keep all sort of new Nissan Genuine parts on their car, the fact that the Z32 brake master cylinder is no longer available genuine uh, it just kind of means you're back to using this in genuine parts. Uh, Eric did mention that he runs uh, the standard Z32 brakes on his car and the brake pedal feel is, is fantastic. So there doesn't seem to be any issues there. Brake bias, I think he said, seems to be perfect as well. So I guess time will tell. Obviously, there's not much I can do as an opinion in that regard because, you know, the vehicle's obviously not, not finished and working. But uh, as soon as the car's up and running, I'll be able to test all that sort of stuff and report back with, um, you know, a little bit, bit of feedback of my own. But so far, it seems absolutely spot on 100%. All right, guys, uh, as I say, I'll leave a link in the description to the original write-up on TT.net that Eric did on this. Plus, I'll leave links to any parts that uh, I can sort of steer you to. And that's about it. So thanks for stopping by the Aussie Shed. Always a bloody pleasure to have you here. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Oh, and one thing I forgot. I need a new brake master cylinder stopper. Hmm. Anyhow, I'll sort that out in another video. Cheers.